I want to introduce my friend, colleague, a serial entrepreneur, and one of the founders of the modern prize movement, Keith Powers. For those of you that know me know that I'm a little bit of an incentive prize junkie. And so I won't dive into the history of prizes and all the different prizes, the ins and outs. Um, pull me aside some other time. But I'm also the guy who stands between you and a scrumptious lunch. So I'm going to cover three things. One is I want to tell you a little bit about how prizes work. Two, I want to put some um, focus on the teams. And three, encourage everyone to, to do something together and then, and then we'll break for lunch. So prizes work because if you put up a prize and you set a target, people have something to shoot for. Prizes are essentially, incentive prizes are essentially a problem-solving ecosystem, community. And so uh, we spent a lot of time, I met June about a year ago, and I knew nothing about the science behind this. If you had said homeostasis, I was, I was Googling it. I'm the guy in the room who represents the people in the room who don't have that science background, which is a lot of times really rewarding because I get to learn a lot. Um, when I was at the XPRIZE Foundation, that was in incredibly um, rewarding because we would go through all these different uh, types of prizes and I got to learn about all of them. But I also represent the public who doesn't necessarily get all this stuff. And sometimes it's a really hard time translating what goes on in science and in technology to what the general public will understand and what they won't, we don't understand. And so we, have a, we actually have a, a big job of doing that. And so besides being problem-solving communities. Prizes are also an amazing way to tell stories. And so once you put up the target, as you're doing it, you have to uh, basically design the difference between being audacious and uh, picking a goal that people believe is really hard, but, uh, but that's achievable. And that's, that takes a long time to do. Um, and so when we started to work on this prize, um, because I didn't have the, the science background, uh, June did, uh, we, we brought in a, a number of scientists and they helped work through that process. And then once we had the initial uh, prize uh, target set up, we then expanded those concentric circles. Um, but it's really hard. It takes a long time because you want to make it right, but you don't want to spend too much time on it. Uh, and um, so then there's three things that prizes do. One is they bring minds together. And this is the most important part of a prize. So once we had decided what the prize goal was, um, I was like, this is, this is awesome. Like, we, we, we have a target. But it's not real until you have teams competing for it. And so when we started to reach out to teams about 90 days ago, um, it was unbelievable the, the number of in, the amount of interest that we had and the conversion rate of people who are working, have been working in this area for years, who were like, yeah, I think we can do this. So that made the prize real. Without the teams, the prize is just a, an amazing idea, but it's not real until teams are going to compete for it. Prizes also bring the media. And so now that we have teams and we have a goal, we can get the media behind it. We can tell the stories of the prize. We can educate the public and about the independent heroes that are actually working out there doing it. And we're going to meet some of them today. And the third is money. And so the million dollar prize purse makes the prize real, but the the real reward here, and you, you'll hear from, from some of the teams, that they would love to win the prize, but they just want someone to win it. They want to move discovery forward. And so in, in, in Silicon Valley, um, you know, startups are raising money, and like they seem to reward themselves when they raise a Series A or a Series B, and it's almost become like the goal is to raise the money. In science, that's not the case. The science is that the money is just you know, the next step to being able to find more discovery. And so those are like the real heroes of our society. There's nothing wrong with raising money to start companies. But when you really look at the underlying factor of like what drives a scientist, uh, the money is just like on the way to the path to get there. So, um, so in that case, so what I want to do is, is uh, move on to run a, uh, an amazing little uh, video of the teams, and then we'll come back. Hi, I'm Dave Mandela. Hi, I'm Doris Taylor. I'm Stephen Porches. I'm Irv Zucker. I'm Jin Lee. I'm William Sorrell. My name is Scott Wolf. I'm a physician by training. And I'm professor and vice chair, Department of Pharmacology and Physiology. I'm the director of regenerative medicine research. Uh, I have a master's degree in physics, and I switched fields around 30 years ago to work in biochemistry. I'm professor of psychiatry. I'm professor and chair of Department of Cellular and Integrative Physiology. I'm an assistant professor of bioengineering and neurology in the George Washington University School of Medicine at the Texas Heart Institute from the University of Nebraska Medical Center at Stanford University University of North Carolina 
and what I do is invent and develop medical devices. I'm the leader of Team DECO for the Palo Alto Longevity Prize. When I heard about the Palo Alto Prize, I was really excited. When I read the description, I was amazed. Because it asks a great question. And I became very excited when I first found out about it. My lab currently works on trying to understand how the brain functions. What I mean by neuromodulation is the ability to alter autonomic outflow by either modulating sensory input to the central nervous system or reducing sympathetic outflow. The polyvagal theory links the autonomic nervous system to health and to social behavior. And it demonstrates how adverse effects in the environment such as danger and life threat, can retune the autonomic nervous system. If you had more parasympathetic activity, your GI system functions better, you have a lower heart rate and much more healthy heart rate. So I think the real target for increasing longevity and increasing the health you have as you age is by increasing and maintaining parasympathetic activity to a lot of your organs. We believe that aging is both a failure of stem cell number and stem cell function. It's really not that complicated. Replace stem cell number, replace stem cell function, prolong life. DECO, DECO, stands for decreasing consumption of oxygen. Increasing doses would be a death hormone. Low doses could be a youth hormone. For this prize, what we intend to do is to understand the neural control behind longevity. Fat runs along your arteries, as do specific important autonomic nerves. So if we can target that fat, we can see whether that fat is causing dysfunction in those nerves. Winning the prize would mean a lot to me and my team. Um, it would not only be the money, of course, but also the recognition and also the uh, spark for moving forward in big ways. I don't want to play if I'm not going to try to win. But more importantly, it's a chance to meet brilliant scientists who are focusing on this area. For one thing, I want to get younger too. But <laughs> It's important to win this prize because it can do a great deal of good for everybody, for all of humanity. The longer people live and the more productive they are, the more they contribute to society. I think now is the time for our science to really give back to society. The race against time is imminent. We're, we're in the struggle, we're in the fight, but we need to act now. We're all in this together, and if you keep us in this room long enough, we'll solve aging. We have a round of applause for this on the team through here. So those are the heroes of this problem-solving community. And so